Oh, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And my name is Dr. Patrick Obsenge. I'm the author of Seven Steps to Greatness and founder of Greatness University. One of, my, of the things that I've been doing is research about great people. That's what we do at Greatness University. And today I'm very pleased to welcome with me in the studio, Mr. Fred Juma, a great writer of a winning character. So welcome, Fred. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for having me on. Oh, yes. It's always, it's a, pleasure. It's always a pleasure when great people meet. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I continue to learn a lot from you, to learn a lot of the people who've written the book. You know, it's uh, very, very impressive to see. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Fred is one of the 77 people that feature in my upcoming book uh, called Les Brown Changed Our Lives. Um, this book will be launched in, uh, will be coming out in July. And Fred, is, his story is in there. And Fred in this book helps us to create a winning character. So in this book, uh, Fred will be showing you his story in detail, but today is just going to give us a flavor about what a winning character is all about. But before we go into that, Fred, could you just tell us about yourself? Who are you? What do you do? And where do you live? So that our, read, our, our viewers can connect with you. Thank you. Okay. I... As Patrick has said, my name is Frederick Juma, and uh, I moved to the UK in 2013 from uh, Kenya. And when I moved here in the UK, I went to study. Finally, in 2008, I graduated from Oxford Brookes University with a postgraduate certificate in education, so, which gave me a qualified teacher status. And uh, so I, you know, as a qualified teacher, most important thing was to find a job. So I found a job in a school teaching religious education to secondary school uh, students. This is 11, 18 year olds in the UK. And uh, uh, more or less the last 10 years of my life, that's what I have been doing. And uh, how I come about, I think, in this, this journey, it's been a long journey. And uh, I must say the last five, of year, five years have been very pivotal, have, have made me to think and to go towards a new direction. Oh, what's that great work you do teaching uh, uh, teaching uh, children in the United Kingdom? That's great work because every child out there needs a great teacher like you. And uh, definitely someone said that great teachers don't just write on paper, but they write on people's lives. So all those 10 years you've been writing on people's lives. And I'm um, just looking forward to seeing your writings on those people, on those people. So, uh, so what? Uh, one of the things that you've accomplished is the great book that is called "A Winning Character." So, in this book, you are writing about how to win in life. How did you come about the title of this book? What led you to write "A Winning Character"? I think in most cases, uh, I'll begin with the title. It's a long story, uh, but uh, I'll, in three things, I think the title has evolved sort of four times. The very first title I had it was actually, Does Your Character Stink? A Way to Develop an Unshakable Character. And uh, my daughter by then was only five, and I showed her that, that, that title, and she told me straight away, Dad, no one is going to buy this kind of book because you're, you're basically abusing people by asking them, does your character stink? But actually, I had come to that realization because um, I, I, I felt there is something really provocative that I wanted to provoke a discussion from people because I think many there's a lot of winching, a lot of talking, a lot of discussion surrounding this whole thing of character and particularly about adolescents, you know, uh, young, children, young, young people. And I really wanted to raise a question to make people think about this. Now, how I came then, obviously, she's ruled it out, so I had to stop. I couldn't use that's your character stink. So I had to use another title, which was What's Up with Your Character? And again, having thought here and there, I, I, you know, I had pros and cons of using that uh, title until finally, through a lot of thinking, uh, that idea of winning came into thought. It could be because I had been introduced to what a friend of mine 
founded a group and he called it the winners winners group and uh, it could be from that that uh, i began this whole thing of using winning rather than uh, whatsapp or anything else now about writing the book i think it's mostly about my experience the book is very much filled about my experience for example i talk about the very first job interview one of the first interviews i went to and uh, my students were those I was going actually to teach in the same school were asking me you know why you why have you come all the way to this school they were so shocked that someone from nowhere like myself had turned up to the north of england to look for a teaching job so i used a lot of my experience to come up with uh, uh you know advice on what we need to do what you and me need to do and other people need to do to actually impact on the character of our children and i believe strongly if we do that we are actually changing the future oh that's a great introduction to that great book a winning character so that book is written not just for people like me who are interested in forming themselves but as well it's written for children it's written for their parents it's written for teachers it's written for a profession out there who is trying to make uh, a life or ends meet in their house so that book appeals to everyone um in many ways it does in many ways when i was writing it i had anyone in uh, above the age of 16 up to i think around 106 uh because i believe anyone around 106 have seen enough in life and uh, I, i don't see there's anything i could add on to their life but i think anyone below that age i believe they could pick up one or, one or two things interesting enough i just had a chat about one of the uh um you know people i met on the road this lady is a painter so she was painting me it's one of the photos i have on facebook and uh, she asked i showed her the book and she said wow this this is so great so i w- i wasn't sure what exactly she had fallen in love with the book but i think it's just one of the quotes in the book she had picked up first thing she read and it really appealed to her so much and i have people up to the, up to today who actually pick up few things and hear and so yes i feel it has impact to a wide variety of people oh thank you very much that's for a great impact in not just in the way of people are reading about your ideas but it's people are acting up on those ideas in other words by the end of your book as soon as someone reaches the end of your book their lives are transformed by what they are reading but looking at as well what you've been doing around the world or the impact of your book is not just about the people are reading it but you're making a difference somewhere in, in Kenya whereby you're supporting a school or charity with the proceeds or the sales of that book Can you tell us more about that? Yes, um in 2011 I must say I think my probably 2012 is a turning point in my life because uh, in 2011 I really thought about my legacy. What is it I want to actually leave behind after, you know, because we are here for a very short time, you know. Even if you live for 100 years, 120 years, it is still relatively short amount of time. as compared to the amount of time the universe has been in, in existence so yes i think is that that's a big question and uh, i think this goes back to um a lot of the motivational literature i have been uh, listening to uh trying to encourage what legacy are you leaving behind and uh, so that's where the school the idea of the school came up in 2011 i had begun thinking about it so we put a very simple structure in uh, uh in kenya in a very rural place next to uganda not far, not far away maybe it's about uh from the border between uganda and kenya that could be about th- half an hour drive so to say okay and uh, so what was happening is that i really thought and it, being an educator as a teacher here i think my best impact is within the schooling uh there's nothing that gives me joy as being able to help a classroom to build a classroom or to to you know to impact some learning in a classroom So that's how it came about and I said actually a lot of the, in this village there was in the primary school you know uh children were having to walk a long way to get one they're having to risk you know uh being attacked by you, you you could talk of some wild animals you could talk of other people you could talk of anything else but this these are very vulnerable children who are having to walk maybe 2 3 kilometers to get to a nearby school 
So that's where the thought came from. And we began building this school in, uh, uh, we opened the very first year in 2014. And this year we are now up about 80 pupils in the primary school from, from uh, pre-unit nursery up to primary five. And uh, we've got six teachers at the moment. And it's been lots of challenges here and there. But my target was to put up to build a classroom every year. And with a few well wishes here and there, and also some of the work that has come through the book, we've been able to do a few things here and there. Yes, I think it's going to be another 10 years, Patrick, before I can actually see the, maybe the whole project complete. But education and building classrooms, I think that's going to be my life work. Oh, thank you very much. That's um, very inspirational and very, definitely very motivating that you're doing something about the world that you, you've lived in and uh, looking at the comparison, looking at the differences between what people have in the United Kingdom, for example, where you work and the, what the teachers and children have in schools in Africa is completely different ballgame. Just given that you've had a chance to look at the two sides, you've taught in the United Kingdom, uh, you've taught in Kenya, and could you quickly draw some two or three comparisons in terms of extremities? They, for example, I do remember uh, I did my studies in Uganda and in the, in the school I went to primary, we didn't have electricity. We didn't have electric. So we would uh, not think about things like computer, interactive whiteboards and um, lighting and revising going home revising would revise under the light of of the stars or the moon there's nothing like having electric in the house so what are the differences the subtle differences so that our re, uh, so that our viewers are able to know why you really went that extra mile to construct that school yeah I th main thing i think it was uh, uh the feeling of, uh, and uh, you know, I was very much inspired as well with Confucius, who said, if you want to be rich for a year, you know, just plant grains, you'll be rich for one year. If you want to be rich for 10 years per decade, plant trees. But if you want to be rich for a generation or for, for life, you've got to educate, educate people. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's coming from that kind of background. And uh, talking about the differences or the extremities between the UK system and the system in Africa, in Kenya and Uganda. And uh, I think a number of schools have been to in both Kenya and been to also a school in Masindi in Uganda, where I felt that the students or the pupils in the, those, those settings in the primary schools were really yearning to learn. You know, they were, there was that eager, there's that uh, um, push that they really feel this is a life changer for me. And uh, I think the, the rate of appreciation for them being able to go to school, like the school where we, you know, the one I began in Kenya is called St. Philomena, St. Philomena Rising Star Academy. And it's St. Philomena because this is as a, coming from that Catholic foundation, St. Philomena is associated with the young. You know, she only died when she was very young, I think, but you know, so. And mm -hmm. so she has been seen as a patron for children, you know, and young people. So, and so I was looking for a miracle to get this project to work. And I had to appeal to the good sense of St. Philomena. And uh, the other things, a rising star, because just as a rising star, no one really knows how it's gonna set in the evening. When it's rising, it's very humble, it's very you know, mild, so to say, or even cold. But then I, I wanted to depict that, that actually this is a project that I have no clue how it's gonna end. But whatever happens, I'm going to go in all out. And there have been moments when I feel um, this challenge, you know, getting the, perhaps the funds, building the classrooms and all that. But overall, I think there's been something out there which has just kept us uh, really on target to keep going and not to shut doors for anything. Now, I think the other extremities here, working day in, in the secondary school in the UK, uh, I think there is sometimes some apathy from students who really don't know why they're in school. I mean, some are, some are there and they're passionate and they want to learn and they want to, they've got high goals in life. They've got uh, targets they want to achieve. And sometimes I keep asking them and actually I'm very happy to hear 
when a student comes up and says, sir, I want to become a world-class you know, um, engineer or I want to become a world-class politician, prime minister, whatever it is. I'm really impressed to hear that. But there's still so many students who are actually just living in there and out with uh, no sense of direction, who are just there because the government wants them to be there, whatever it is, or their parents, which is a very different from Africa because parents in most cases you know, have got to pay for the children to be in school. And so it, they, they've, got, they've got to work for it. Um, yeah. oh, thank you very much for that contribution, exactly, uh, for any progress to take place, for something to change. Uh, people have to have a clear vision. Clarity, clarity is one of the laws of success. Because the problem that I have that in life uh, that most people do, possibly make a mistake, is that living without knowing exactly why they are alive. That needs to be a commitment to know what is the purpose of my life. Yeah. Once someone knows their purpose, then the purpose should be attracting them to that what they want to get out of this life. And the purpose should assemble, most of will assemble the people around them so that they're able to achieve that purpose, so that they're able to achieve and live their dreams. If not, as the proverb says, where there's no vision, the people perish. So there needs to be vision, there needs to be a clear goal, purpose. So how can people get in touch with your school uh, the viewers, just ladies and gentlemen, I'm um, just interviewing Mr. Fred Ojuma, who's the author of The Winning Character. And we've been discussing about one of the projects that is supporting in Kenya, in Africa, which is a school, a school that takes care of children in the village who, where uh, they have no school at all. And uh, he has dedicated all the proceeds of his book to supporting that children's school, that school in that village. So if people want help, if people want to come and see what is happening on the ground, if people want to volunteer their time and their effort and possibly their resources, how can they get in touch with you? Okay, um, I think the best way to get in touch with me is uh, uh, through the email, a winning character at yahoo.com. Uh, uh, perhaps we'll leave it in the description at some point, yes? And uh, um, also there is a Facebook group under the same name, the name of the book, uh, just the same as a winning character. If you search that up, it should come up. If you can leave me a message on there, I'll be able to uh, get back to you. And obviously, yes, we, I will very much appreciate any help. And uh, uh, sometimes I think it's just about even, the, even just the good thought of saying, well, Fred, what you're doing is actually really good. I think that kind of encouragement can go a long way. And uh, uh, so please, either through the Facebook group, a Winning Character, or you can drop me an email on a, a Winning Character at yahoo.com. Also, I have set up a YouTube channel just three weeks ago and uh, under my name, Frederick Ojuma, uh, to share some ideas from a Winning Character. And hopefully, when what, whatever project is going to come my way, I'm going to keep uploading some videos and sharing some messages here and there. So you're welcome to share, to like, to join in. I'll be very grateful to link up with you. Oh, thank you very much for the uh, lasting contribution. So one of the things that I've been talking about with Mr. Fred Juma is that he has his story in my upcoming book called Let's Brown Change Our Lives. And one of the things that Fred did, and actually one of the children of Fred is called Leslie. So could you make us the link between your son, your son called Leslie and your story ending up in this book? What has it to do with Mr. Les Brown? Yeah, um, I, I got hooked, I must say, on self-development in 2013. That's five years ago. And uh, in 2013, I listened to lots of different speakers. You know, you can name it Jim Rohn, Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins, all the Zig Ziglar, and lots of other world-class speakers. But I think the voice of one man remains so strong in me, and that is none other than Les Brown. When I, the first YouTube recording of Les, Gra Les Brown, uh, you've got to be hungry. I think when I heard that, 
that really spoke to my soul. And uh, it made me to ask myself a question. Fred, you now, you're now a school teacher. Well, you go, you're now a parent. And uh, is this it for life? Is there anything else? Is this, are you done with life? And I think just listening to him talking about you've got to be hungry. Uh, you know, I, I, it made me to ask myself deeper questions. I began reflecting. So 2013, uh, my son was born in 2015. So throughout 2014, it was a very difficult time. I was just coming to, I was asking myself that question and feeling rather unfulfilled. Maybe the job not going very well. I had also just graduated with my master's from uh, Heathrow College, University of London. And I had hoped on to go to stay on and do my PhD. That hadn't really worked well. So the job wasn't working that well. The, you know, the life goals of doing that PhD wasn't working that well. So I just felt a lot was not right. And I was having very, a lot of very low self-esteem, you know, uh, questioning myself, can I really do this? Can I become that world-class speaker I, I hope to become? Can I actually write a book that people would want to read? And uh, I must say I had that negative inner voice nagging me that there's really nothing I'm going to have to do. And it's something I actually talk about in the book. I think I, I talk about that whole journey, how I went through that low moments of my life uh, in 2013, 2014, uh, when lots of this negative inner voice was saying to me that I don't, uh, sort of like my life is fixed. I, I don't see myself really getting out of this so low self-esteem. I remember talking to one of my contributors of this book, by the way, and uh, asked this gentleman for, I was doing a questionnaire, and I went to this gentleman and, uh, you know, he's very, very successful man, he was a chairman of a, a big company and all that. And so he looked at me and said, Fred, have you read Seven Habits of Highly Successful People? This is by Stephen Covey. And that hit me hard. Actually, he had made a point. He had said, how could I write a book that could be next door to Stephen Covey's Seven Habits? And actually, Seven Habits is uh, my all-time favorite. It's one of the books that really challenged me and have influenced me a lot. And so I, as much as he was helping me to think, it really put me down that actually there's no way. But then I say to myself later on that I can't really compare. I'm not going to write another Seven Habits. I've got to write what speaks to me. And perhaps what speaks to me is what will make more difference to other people who perhaps will never read Seven Habits, or who have, have, perhaps have read Seven Habits, but this is now my anchor, my take on a different uh, perspective. Now, how we came to name him Leslie is that throughout 2014, when he was unborn, we were listening to Les Brown literally every day. If we missed a day, we'll feel a cold, you know? I really feel something is not right. It was like an addiction, you know, to listen to uh, motivational uh, speeches of Les Brown. And so it was almost natural that that was going to go the way. We hadn't decided on the name, but I think uh, there's no way we we're, not, we're not going to use Les Brown since he had been the voice in our head all those nine months when he was in the womb. And actually when Leslie was born in uh, May 2015, and uh, I looked up and said, Leslie, shoot for the moon, because even if you miss, you land among the stars. And the nurses were looking about the midwife, and she was wondering what I was saying if I had gone ballistic. But then how I really stood by those words. And when I was writing to people to tell them that they you know, had a child, that was this quote that I had at the beginning. Then I said, well, we now have got a child, and it's called Leslie. So it has been a massive impact in my life because now I just think about this stuff every day. I know that uh, whatever happens to my future now, I think the voice of Les Brown uh, his motivational stuff is something that's going to really push me forward. Oh, that's great and believable. So let's Brown change your life by changing your life, by changing you the way you looked at things, giving mm. you the motivation, change your life by you ending up naming your son Leslie, and even change your life by pushing your trailer book, which is again a winning character, which is again transforming lives in Kenya. That's great. Yeah. Wow. wow. And wow. one thing I must add, Patrick, when you speak to Les Brown, I actually emailed him when Leslie was born. And uh, <laughs> I, was, I was expecting a reply. I never got one. But anyhow, 
I emailed him just to thank him for uh, having motivated me all through this time. And uh, just, I, I'm not sure if I sent him a picture of the, the newborn, but definitely, yes, that is something that I'm very proud to have done. Oh, that is great news. So actually, Les Brown says in life, they are winners, they are losers. Yeah. And there are people who have not yet discovered how to win. So what would be your message to those people who want to win in life? Looking um, at what you've achieved now, looking at how people like Les Brown have helped you in your journey. What is a message that you can give to people on how to win in life? Uh, my message, I think I'll go back to the statement from Les Brown that really motivated me to write this book. And uh, I was listening to one of his recordings where he said, write your book even if no one publishes your book. Write your book because that book has been given to you. And I think I will say, I will leave the same message to all uh, readers, all everyone listening to this, that uh, um, there is something that we have all been given from above, okay? Uh, for those who believe in God like me, I will say it's from God. Uh, but those who don't, it could be from the divine spirit, from the divine intelligence, from, uh, you know, Allah, from whoever it is, yes, yeah. And uh, that being has given you something to do. And I think it is you to do it. And if you don't do it, I think all of you um, will suffer because that only you can bring that up. If I didn't write this book, it's never going to be a book by the same title, with the, with, you know, with the, with the same subtitle, how to develop an unshakable character for guaranteed success in life. It's never going to be a book with that kind of an eagle. And, uh, you know, uh, so basically what I'm saying is that you, yours might be music, yours might be to compose some songs, it might be to entertain others, to produce a film. It could be to become a world-class um, uh, sports person, whatever it is, to win an Olympics, an Oscar, it, whatever it is. There is something that we all have been given, I believe, from above. And uh, we've got to do that. And three words that have really motivated me is, it is possible. And I think Les Brown says this a lot in his speeches, it is possible. It is something that I continue to motivate myself a lot. I look, at, I look now forward, you know, the next 10 years. Being a teacher is a decision I made, in, I made 12 years ago. And that has changed my life to where I am now. But I think looking forward the next 10 years again, I think it is possible. It's a word that is going to influence me a lot. And I will say the same to you. Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're planning, whatever dreams, whatever goals you have, it is possible. Thank you very much. That's great. Definitely it's possible for everyone, isn't it? It's all about mindset as well. Uh, is some people, they let their current circumstances become their standard. Okay. Whatever you're living now, you see it as your standard. But the moment you start thinking about possibility, uh, the infinite possibilities and the infinite pos opportunities out there then you start craving for those opportunities. You start craving for those uh, uh, for those uh, better circumstances that possibly you've just dreamed of. So the moment you start stretching yourself and moving outside of your comfort zone, everything is possible. Yes, it's possible. Thank you very much. So I also believe very much that a book is a very important and lasting legacy that anyone can leave behind when they are gone. So if I ask myself a question or you ask yourself a question, what is that one thing that will be left undone when I'm gone? That house you built might go any time. Yeah. If there's an earthquake or, or flooding, that house could go. The property, whatever you might have uh, in terms of possession, that could just disappear. Uh, the other two weeks ago, my laptop crashed and I lost everything that was on the laptop. But the great news is that I had already published most of my books on the Les Brown book, which I'm just finishing off now. I had sent it, just sent it, actually, as I was 
press the send button to the person who was proofreading my book. And then the computer blanked. That was, that was the end of it. They didn't see anything else. That was it. So all that could disappear. But what, that book is still there, stored somewhere in the cloud. Anyone can read it. Anyone can access it. And that's a lasting legacy that I could encourage anyone to think about writing a book, writing their stories. And one of the things I'm doing is helping people publish their stories, not just a book, because the book it might take you a lot of time. What about writing your story and putting it in one of the books that people might be putting in their stories? That is a very important treasure that you can leave to your children, to your great-grandchildren, and to the future generation that you have left a mark on this world, not a mark on your body. Thank you. So thank you very much. And I've been talking to Mr. Fred Ojuma. Fred Ojuma is the author of The Winning Character. Um, this book is telling us a story, his story on how he has discovered how to win in life. And if you're interested, get this book. Not just by the book, but importantly, all the proceeds go to support his uh, project in Africa, where he is building a school in a village where children walk miles and miles and miles to get to a school against all odds, being attacked by animals, attacked by the fellow human beings, and all the hazards of life. So... If you're interested, link up to Fred Ojuma at his email, a winning character at yahoo.com, and start the conversation going. Thank you very much, Fred. So, Fred, just before you go, could you just give us a one minute summary of what you'd like to leave with the world? What you'd like to tell the world, just in one minute, a summary. Okay. Um, I think to summarize, after after I'm gone, I think I want to be known as someone who impacted on people's, uh, um, someone who brought out the best in people, basically. I think that's one thing I'm really working on. And uh, I am not yet there, but still work in progress. I think there's a lot of a lot in me that I've not put out yet. And uh, I want to be that voice. I think the world is going to a point whereby there's a lot of negativity, there's a lot of conflicts, a lot of... Uh, vices that we are many people are focusing on all the time and i think i want to be that voice and uh, to join other people other positive thinking people to join other inspirational voices to actually make a mark in this world and hopefully after long we have gone uh the future generations will look back and say surely there lived some people who taught us how to live there lived some people who passed some wisdom to us there lived some people who made a difference. Oh, thank you very much it. for the contribution and you're definitely making a difference with your life. Uh, just before we leave, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for uh, joining us Steve, in, uh, this afternoon as we discussed uh, Fred's journey to greatness and how Les Brown supported him in that journey to greatness. If you're interested in knowing more about Fred, uh, Fred then his story is one of the seven seven featured in this book, Let's Brown Change Our Lives. So I look forward to you getting that story. I look forward to you connecting with Fred and making it possible, not just for you, but for the rest of the world, that we are living this world a better place than we found it. That's what we're going to be remembered for, making a positive difference to this great universe. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you for watching and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Patrick. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. Thank you.